there's any of the other ones you want me to redo? Because I feel like sometimes I do a lot of ums. So <laughs> you can let me know. <laughs> so I'm Dr. Tiffany Libby. I'm a board certified dermatologist and Mohs surgeon at Brown Dermatology and I practice in Rhode Island. Well, Cetaphil is one of those tried and true brands and it has a lot of science-backed clinicals behind it. So it's very easy for us as dermatologists to recommend it to patients who are often undergoing other topicals and using a lot of other topical medications so their skin can tend to be more sensitive. So I'm very excited about Cetaphil's new formulations. I love that they've added niacinamide, panthenol, and glycerin, which are some of my favorite ingredients and really help to strengthen and support the skin's moisture barrier. So this is a very fun question because um, there are about five different skin types out there. There is normal, oily, dry, sensitive, and combination. And an easy way to find out what kind of skin type you have is by using a foaming cleanser first to remove more and more of those oils from your skin and then waiting a few hours and observing your skin over these next few hours. And if you find that your skin is more um, dry or tight or flaky, you most likely have dry skin. If you're, you find that your skin is very shiny, you most likely have oily skin. If that oil is contained to more of a T-zone, so your forehead, nose, and chin, I would, I would classify that as combination skin. Normal skin would be um, after that three hour period, you wouldn't notice much change. You wouldn't be oily or dry and tight. And lastly, sensitive skin can actually affect all of those skin types. So any one of those types can actually have sensitive skin as well. So dry skin is skin that's gonna look a little dull, not as radiant, and it might feel very tight and flaky. oily skin, you're going to see your skin's a little shiny. Um, if you have more combination skin, you might see that that oil is more confined to the T-zone, so the forehead, nose, and chin. So I think when you're looking for a cleanser, obviously this is a really important step of your day. You want to be washing off the pollution, the makeup, the dirt, and the buildup off your skin, but you also really want to make sure you're not stripping your skin of excess oils, which can really lead to irritated and inflamed skin. So I love looking for products that have hydrating and nourishing ingredients. Cetaphil does a great job. All of their cleansers are formulated with sensitive skin in mind, so you know that none of these cleansers will overstrip or over dry your skin. So cleansing is a really important step in our skincare routine. Those with dry skin should still be using a cleanser once or twice a day to clean their skin. They should be looking for formulas that are hydrating. So again, ones with the niacinamide, panthenol, and glycerin to help support the moisture barrier. So for my oily skin patients, I find a lot of them really enjoy using foaming cleansers. These foaming cleansers do a little bit of a better job of removing that excess oil. What's really important is not to over cleanse. So you want to make sure even though you're using a foaming cleanser, you're using one with hydrating ingredients and one that's still going to help retain moisture in your skin. So as a skin cancer surgeon, I talk about SPF all day long to my patients and about the importance of using it to protect their skin. So the three most important things to look for in a sunscreen is SPF 30 or higher. You wanna make sure it's broad spectrum, so it protects your skin against UVA and UVB rays. And then you also want to find one that's water resistant, and you can find all of those on the label on the bottle. So studies show that people are not using enough sunscreen to achieve the stated SPF on the bottle. So recommended for the head and neck, you want to be using a quarter size amount of, of your SPF on that entire area. And most people are using much less than that. So they're not actually achieving that SPF 30 or SPF 50 that's stated on the bottle. So another important point for sunscreen is to reapply. So we recommend reapplying every two hours or after coming out of the pool or exercising if you're sweating a lot. Melanoma is the deadliest form of skin cancer. The number one risk factor for melanoma is UV radiation. So the number one most important form of prevention for melanoma is sun protection. So you want to make sure you're properly using your SPF and using an appropriate SPF. So one that is SPF 30 or higher, one that has broad spectrum coverage, and one that's water resistant. 
Another risk factor for melanoma is tanning bed use. So we absolutely want to avoid tanning beds. Even one use of a tanning bed can increase your risk of melanoma. So melanoma can absolutely affect people of all ages and skin types. So I've definitely seen patients who are in their 20s who have had an extensive history of tanning bed use come in and have their first diagnosis of melanoma. You also want to ask around your family and see if you have any family history of melanoma. If you do, you may want to go and get your full body skin exam sooner. A common misconception is that patients with darker skin types are not susceptible to developing skin cancer. So we as dermatologists really strive to educate our patients that anyone of any skin type and skin color is susceptible to developing skin cancer even though you might there might be a lower prevalence um, patients who have darker skin types absolutely are and can be at risk of developing all different types of skin cancer including melanoma so the classic way to screen for um, a changing mole is looking at the a b c d e's and that's going to be your a asymmetry b your borders c for color D for diameter and E for evolution. If you're unsure, I definitely recommend going to see your board certified dermatologist. We use these little fancy tools like dermoscopy, um, dermatoscopes to help us better visualize the, the mole. 